Coming up on today's episode of AMA Drone Report, Canada releases new hobby drone regs, first anti-drone race coming up, tiny whoop drones making big impression. Hi, I'm Bree Cross. Welcome to Airborne's AMA Drone Report on Aero TV a weekly news program covering the recreational drone world in partnership with the Academy of Model Aeronautics, one of the oldest and most respected aviation organizations in the world, with more than 195,000 members and 2,400 clubs across the country. The Canadian government has recently released new regulations for recreational drone operators that carry hefty penalties for violators, even more so than those here in the U.S. The new rules apply to aircraft weighing between about a half pound and 77 pounds, being flown non-commercially. Under the new rules, recreational drones may not be flown higher than 90 meters, about 295 feet above the ground, closer than 75 meters, about 245 feet from buildings, vehicles, vessels, animals, people, and crowds, and closer than 9 kilometers, about 5.6 miles from the center of any aerodrome, defined as anywhere that aircraft take off and land. The rules also prohibit flight in controlled or restricted airspace within about 5.6 miles of a forest fire or anywhere where the aircraft could interfere with police or first responders. Recreational drones must not be flown at night or in clouds and must be kept in sight at all times. The operator's name, address, and telephone number must be clearly marked on the aircraft. Fines can be as high as about $2,250 US dollars. Transport Canada has also established a website where citizens can report unsafe drone use. In the next drone minute, let's take a brief look at a few of the shorter stories that are making the rounds of the small UAS and hobby drone communities. Another day, another Kickstarter drone project, but this one has raised over 1 million bucks. Cellfly, a very small, autonomous, detachable flying camera, has reportedly been, quote, built from scratch to perform as a camera system operating in full cooperation with your phone, standing or hovering autonomously anywhere. The cell phone controlled mini drone uses high-end stabilization technology to simplify the flying requirements. Boston College freshman Brannix Weitz recently shared his week-long trip to Costa Rica to help researchers track endangered sea turtles. His company, Skylink Productions, partnered with the nonprofit group Seeds of Change and used an array of drones to help researchers study nesting turtles on a remote peninsula of the Central American country. Wix's idea was to see how well a pre-programmed drone could help survey the population and nesting habits of those species. DJI's well-known drone expert and legal advisor, Brennan Schulman, dropped an interesting research report on the net recently, concluding that drones have thus far been used in saving 59 lives. Schulman noted early on that, quote, yet the most consequential use of drones may be to save and protect human life. Search for Lives Saved, a survey of drones in action for some very interesting reading. That was our Drone Minute, now back to the rest of the news. Positioning that we need anti-drone instruments, the folks at the TU Delft Micro Air Vehicle Lab will host the first ever anti-drone competition, Drone Clash, before the end of the year. During this competition, participants use their own drones to take down as many other drones as possible, but they also need to avoid a whole series of anti-drone interventions. The teams will gather this December in one of Valkenburg Airfield's hangars in the Netherlands. Four teams will compete in each round. Each team has one or more fighter drones, which can be used to take down other drones, and a so-called queen drone, which they need to defend. It's a dramatic competition, and the names make it sound even better. The teams will start in the Battle First Arena, where they have to start trying to take each other down. The surviving drones then fly through the hallway of doom, death, and destruction to be attacked by all kinds of anti-drone instruments. The remaining drones enter the Four Queen Palace, where they must try to knock out Queen drones of the other teams. The survivor victor is the winner. The Drone Clash hopes to provide a platform for all parties interested in anti-drone instrument development. A company operating out of a basement in Fort Collins, Colorado, is making what may be some of the smallest FPV drones available. 
The tiny Whoop quadcopters were born of the mini drone racing trend. Racers would stay at an Airbnb, and after a long day of racing mini quadcopters, they would stage informal micro drone races in the houses, set them to music composed by a friend of Tiny Whoop founder Jesse Perkins, and post them to YouTube. The rest is mini FPV history. The fad became a business building the Tiny Whoop drones, which retail for about $275, including the VR goggles. However, an upgraded set of goggles is necessary to record the video for posting on the internet, according to Ben Shepard, a composer who writes the music that accompanies the videos. Pilots can submit memes for YouTube videos through the Tiny Whoop website, and yeah, it all looks like so much fun that we've got to try it out for ourselves. We'll let you know how we do. Well, that's our program for this week. In addition to this program, our daily Airborne Limited episodes covering the entire aviation and aerospace world are streamed Monday through Friday. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and tweet us. Get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net and more information on the exciting hobby drone world at modelaircraft.org. We'll see you next week.